Hey everybody, Dave here. How are y'all doing tonight? Tomorrow? Yesterday afternoon? Well, not really. You know the drill. It's syndicated pipe club time once again. And as always, I have with me Greg the Badger Piper. How are you doing tonight, Greg? Oh, tired, uh, but uh, doing okay. Took my son to the zoo yesterday and uh, it was a uh, pretty busy day. <laughs> yeah? Did you like the monkeys? He didn't get a chance to see the monkeys. Uh, he did get a chance to see some meerkats, um, some big cats, and uh, alligator, among other animals, and uh, turtle. Nice. Nice. Okay, so guys, you may have may have noticed that the sound's pretty darn close now. That's because. Greg got his piece we were waiting for, and he's using a mic very similar to the one that I'm using. As a matter of fact, same brand. I decided to switch over, so if you're listening to the podcast, you may think we're actually in the same room, but we're not. Where are we? You may I never know. <laughs> I actually took the set and snuck past the Canadian borders, and uh, we're actually uh, set up right across from each other. That one's empty. Stupid lighters. But uh, yes, thank you, Marcus, for uh, finally uh, upgrading my uh, audio for me. <laughs> yeah, uh, like, yeah, we're going to have to get that adjusted a little bit because I, I can tell when you're facing a little bit further away, you might get a little bit closer. I know you're not used yeah. to it. Yeah, no, it's, it's just uh, something now that I have to get used to now that I don't have it uh, as yeah. a earpiece. But yeah, you. As soon as he, because uh, I recorded uh, something for a, a different podcast, uh, a little commercial, and uh, sent it to him, and he listened to it and immediately was like, uh, "Hey, uh, uh, do you have, what kind of microphone are you using?" <laughs> and I was like, "Oh, uh oh, <laughs> I, I guess I know what the what the problem is with it." So, uh, thank you, Marcus, for upgrading. Uh, my audio. Yes, thank you, Marcus. Thank you. I'm so happy. And I will uh, put it to good use. But anyway, enough audio talk. Let's uh, talk for you for now. What are you smoking tonight? Uh, I am smoking some uh, Cornell and Deal stovepipe in my Rossi uh, Naughty. Uh, Spelled N O T T E. I, I think that's how you pronounce it. Uh, billiard. Uh, this was uh, uh, a couple months ago. A pipe was sent to my house that uh, I thought was a birthday gift for me, but uh, it turns out that uh, someone had mistakenly sent it there, uh, my uh, previous uh, secret Santa, and uh, sent it back to him regretfully because uh, I really liked the pipe that was in there, but I made a uh, note of what kind of pipe it was and uh, now at Father's Day I was able to uh, fix that up and so uh, fix it remedy that and so now all is well. Excellent excellent. Me, I'm smoking a Savinelli it is a Deluxe Milano and in it I have some Orlick Orlick, Orlick, Dark, Strong Kentucky I think mm. And it's it's not bad. It's just too bad that it's, well, not technically out of production because I know there's a way you can get a hold of some. But it's it's not being sold in the states anymore, which means I can't get a hold of it either. Hmm. I didn't realize that. That's uh, that's too bad. Yeah, it is because you know Max sent uh, a bunch of us from this pipe this pipe life thing over the over the over the pandemic uh, a tin of the stuff and. Of course, you know, I didn't have the money at the time to buy a couple of tins, but yeah, now I do, and now I can't. <laughs> I can't find it anywhere. Uh, gotta love it. But yeah, speaking speaking of pipes and, and whatnot, um, eBay's gonna be the death of me one of these days. Put a bit in on a pipe, I, can't, I couldn't help it. 
Found a found a Bing's favorite, an actual used one, not a brand new one. So I got a, I've got a bit on there, and I ho I'm hoping that three days from now I'm still the highest bidder. Hope you do too, because uh, yeah, those pipes are great. Uh, definitely another uh, kind of pipe that I'd love to have one day. Yeah, it's in decent shape by the pictures. It does a little little work, of course, but it's it's a used. It's an estate pipe. Um, it's not going to be much in the way of cleanup, I don't think. Uh, a little bit of charring on the on the bowl, but that happens to everybody. That's fixable. So if my bid holds, I should be able to get it and get it here for around fifty dollars. That's not bad at all. Yeah, so I'm hoping I'm hoping people don't overbid me and I hope they don't bid me up to my max. Because well Then I'm not, I'm out of luck because I I've, I've got my bid figured out at around about twenty dollars twenty five dollars American and that's somewhere in the neighborhood of thirty ish dollars here. So actually, I might be pushing 60 on that pipe, depending on where it lands. Yeah. Especially since when you buy them new, they're like 120, 130. For real. Yeah, they're definitely on the pricier side of the South uh, uh I mean, not uh, as ridiculous as some of their... Well, not as expensive as some of their pipes, but uh, it's definitely always over to for all of them yeah but anyhow I've been sitting here trying to figure out a good way to transition between pipe talk and avatar talk and there's just no good way to do it except for the fact that you know maybe we're crossing on the opposite sides of the border Yeah, no, absolutely. You know, like, uh, even though Avatar and pipe smoking can be uh, very uh, differently, like different tribes, uh, you can still find a way to bring them together somehow. Absolutely. And with that, we were going to start talking about the episode Crossing the Divide, in which Ang and the gang escort two tribes across a big ravine with the help of an earthbending guide. Not yes, top. Uh, uh, a pretty fun one. Uh, even though uh, he gets, uh, you know, hurt early on and uh, taken out from uh, being as useful. But that's what uh, makes a fun challenge of it. Absolutely. And... I was going to say something about that, and I just lost the thought. And th this was an interesting episode. I mean, it's, uh, you know, for one, I, I won't call it filler, because um, it, you know, it's not really necessarily dealing with, uh, it, it's more of like a, kind of like a one and done type of episode and, and everything, but uh Despite that, like it was still interesting to watch. Definitely, and uh, it, where you know where you the, the the threat was something that uh, was more of like uh, nature, I guess, both with the canyon and then with the big uh, spider ant creatures that uh, the crawlers and. Uh, so that was good. Uh, it, you know, we didn't it got a little bit of a break from uh, things like uh, the the Fire Nation, uh, and a lot of the uh, but a lot of the conflict comes from the, the two tribes and, and the personalities within both. Absolutely. Yeah, we have the 
Oh, shoot, I can't remember the names, and I literally just watched this an hour ago. I watched it three weeks ago, so there's no way I can <laughs> so I'm definitely not remembering that. <laughs> oh, one was Ganjin, I know that. I can't remember the name of the other one. They were two tribes that ended with the name Jin. I can tell you that much. Yeah. I thought they were going to be a bunch of genies, to be honest with you. Now one uh, one tribe is very stuffy and stuck up and uh, proper, while the other one is much more rugged and uh, I wouldn't say like hill hillbillyish or whatever, but like uh, you know they. I guess they would be kind of like the trashy, <laughs> kind of like uh, uh, people. Yeah, they don't put as much stock in, you know, the the the, the niceties, the the cleanliness and all. They may not wash their hands, but they'll help you out in a pinch. Right. They'll they'll fix your car for you. Uh, whereas uh, the other tribe, you know, may not be able to, you know, help you out on uh, help you move your couch, but uh, they'll help you find a, a good deal at. A, uh, on where you should move. Well, I was actually more thinking they, they, they'd help you out with your essay. Hmm. That's what they they struck me as. They're... Yeah. More bookish. But uh, despite that, uh, I mean, and it's pretty easy to see. Uh, both tribes are equally flawed. And, uh, but uh, they bicker amongst each other because of this long-standing rivalry that happened uh, many years ago with uh, someone from their tribe, uh, the, the Stuffy tribe and the other, and someone dealing with uh, um, kind of a trashy tribe. Yeah, and the, the interesting thing about these guys is one was named Jin Wei and the other one was named Wei Jin. Mm-hmm. So, let's talk about that for just a second. That's either lazy yeah. writing or brilliance. I am not sure which. No, definitely. And and really, it's kind of like... Uh, I think a parallel that you can make in this episode is kind of the yin-yang. And that being both... Uh, you know, very symbolic for for this episode with the two tribes, where uh, you know they they clash, but ultimately they're stronger together than uh, on their own. Definitely, even though they uh, happen to cause a lot of their own problems. For sure. Oh boy do they I mean they both get to the tour guide and Aang and Katara and Sokka we're just planning on flying over on Appa but both these tribes show up and Aang's job ends up making them walk through the the valley in a day just like the tribes because well they got, there's some sick people and some old people and uh, Appa goes ahead and ferries them over and the youngsters, they, they walk and argue the whole dang way. At, so, at some point, I was really sure, certain I was going to hear Aang go, You kids better quit arguing. I'm going to turn this valley around. Seriously, like, uh, I, of course it makes sense that the, the youngest member of the entire group happens to be the most mature. Well, he also happens to be the oldest member of the entire group. Oh, yeah. Well, yeah. Oh, true. Uh, no, that is a, a good point. Uh, he's both the youngest and the oldest. There's one that'll bend your mind. I'm a 12-year-old boy, but I was born 112 years ago. Which does come into play, actually. Uh... Mm-hmm. Yeah, um, 
it's uh, what I like and a character that I really enjoyed really was, was the guide even though he gets uh, you know injured pretty early on like if you've ever taken a uh, a tour at some sort of like uh, national like park or you know some sort of place like they don't all act like that but you can tell like uh, they they definitely have that similarities definitely just with that that kind of like showmanship while also you know spouting facts here and there um, but uh and of course, he knows how to survive and everything, but uh, unfortunately, the, the two tribes disregard his advice on uh, making sure they don't have food for the trip, and uh, they all bring food uh, secretly. Yes, they all smuggle food in because they don't think they, they know the other tribe's going to do it too. In a way, and they, they were both right, even though they were both in the wrong. No, actually, the uh, the rugged tribe leader was right on the money because she said during this episode that, hey, you know, they're probably eating food right now. They don't, they don't trust us so much that they probably just figured we were going to smuggle food in. So they brought it anyway. So that's why we brought it, because they were going to do it anyway, whether we did or not. Yeah. Uh, no, that's right. That's correct. So, yeah, it's just it's just it's just a strange thing it's just to see to see how these 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 feuds between tribes can just go on for years and get distorted. We may never even know what actually in their history started off this thing. If their versions right. of the story were just, you know, each um, tribe remembering it favorably to, for their guy, or some other version. Not Aang's, of course, because that's a total lie. Right. But Which I eventually want, want to get to uh, before we wrap up, because I, I want to talk about that for sure. Um, no, it, it is interesting, because, you know, we all have uh, every nation kind of has their and location kind of has their own folklore and legends you know like with uh like in america we have uh george washington you know chopped down a cherry tree uh when he was a kid and, uh you know famously told his father that uh, he did it because uh, he could not tell a lie uh stories like that i'm, this, I'm sure too that you know your country has them as well yes we do you need to move that mic a little bit closer. You're dropping off. Probably doesn't help that I'm sitting in a chair with wheels, too. <laughs> so am I. <laughs> but, like I said, learning curve. So there, there's going to be some of these things in, in the next couple episodes. Just can't be avoided. Right. Hey, at least I got it working on my phone, so... It's better than last week. Yes. Okay, um, yeah. Yeah, there's, there's, there's things. To be honest, I've forgotten most of them uh, from over here. Um, so you, you, you can see how memorable my history is. <laughs> Not very. Why if I... Uh, I find it interesting. Uh, I, I love just learning like uh, different countries, uh, you know, their their little stories like that. Uh, and so I, I enjoyed that aspect of this episode. The fact that there was so much, uh, you know, it, I guess it kind of reminds me. I'm sure you've probably heard the story, but uh, the Hatfields and the McCoys. Mm, yes, that's definitely a story I was interested in because I have relatives on that side of the border that come from that area and no I'm not descended from them I tried to find out nothing I'm not descended from any of the interesting historical families my wife's 
father's side it comes from the Hatfields. Nice. But uh, they weren't involved with all of that. In fact, they were so embarrassed by... Uh, now, that this could be legend, but uh, I don't know. It kind of makes sense to me, but apparently they were so embarrassed by the whole uh, everything happening between the two families that they changed their last name to uh, Fields rather than Hatfields. Could be. Very well could be. I just thought of something. I do have in, in my family a, uh, a legend. It's definitely a legend because I was able to prove it wrong. But uh, when I was young, um, the American relatives, that when they would come over for the yearly uh, family reunion, would uh, always talk about how they were related to General Robert E. Lee. And uh, yeah, it was, it was a big old, it was big, big to do, big thing. I don't think many of them were Southern supporters, or, or don't get me wrong, there were certainly no uh, neo-Nazis in there. Um, but it was a thing, you know, it was a historical figure, and they were kind of proud of it and whatnot, and it, all, it intrigued me. It's actually what got me started on genealogy. And um, after some research, I found out we were related to Robert E. Lee, the lieutenant in a different regiment, not the general. Now, I'm sure if you go back just a few more generations from there, you could probably find the link where they they were cousins or something like that. But no, not related to General Robert E. Lee. Which, in this day and age, is probably a good thing. Yeah, especially uh, after the events of last year and all that. Uh, but still, I mean, I would still, you know, I would still find that interesting. I think there would just be some crazy, insane people that would... Uh, take some sort of offense to that like you have control over the who you are descended from exactly okay now let, let's get off that before we get cancelled so yeah they get through they, they use the smuggled food to ride the cave crawlers up the side of the cave and then Ang tells a story about Jinwei and Wei Jin, and how he was there a hundred years ago to the day. Jinwei and Wei Jin were not enemies; they were brothers. They were they were eight, and they were playing a game called Redemption. The Sacred Orb was a ball, and Wei Jin was Jinwei. Whichever one of them was not put in jail for twenty years, they were put in a penalty box for two minutes. I do like how the referee was a panda. Yes. So this story is how Aang gets the two tribes to consider working together or going to Ba Sing Se together as they are technically family and nobody died and there's there's no there's nobody died needlessly or was imprisoned needlessly or any of those things. And uh they decide to go as one tribe, united, even though they still walk down the sides of the road, divided. At least they were together. Yes, at least they were together. Those poor simps. <laughs> yes. Yeah, no, I, uh, I don't know how I felt uh, when a uh, whole, th you know, after Aang told his story, I was like, oh, that's kind of silly, and then you know, when you find out, oh, Aang made it up and everything. I don't know, like, uh, how, how I felt about that. Uh, like, I, I felt like it was kind of like a weird choice. Uh, you know, especially since a lot of, you know, kids' cartoons and even, like, uh, stuff, uh, you know, other kind of uh, shows uh, for different ages, a lot of... Uh, Emphasis is put on telling the truth. Oh yeah, and uh, and I get to you know that both tribes are being ridiculous in telling the story, uh, you know by um, you know holding on to a grudge that uh, you know by all intents and purposes should just kind of be forgotten. But 
Yeah, I, I felt like it really kind of surprised me that they would uh, take that route and uh, have that be the way that uh, the problem was solved. Yeah, it was interesting. Because what's the moral of the story? Lie, children, you will get your way. Right. Uh, I definitely feel like uh, at times Avatar kind of goes into more of a moral gray. It does. It really does. Like between this and the pirate episode where uh, there's no real All right. horrible con to consequence to uh, Katara you know, taking that scroll. And, you know, I get that in real life, not necessarily everything that we do as bad translates into something horrible happening to us. And uh, likewise, you know, sometimes doing the good or right thing means more problems or trouble for us. But... Uh, yeah, I don't know how, how I feel about that. Uh, I think if I was in the writer's room, I would have tried to suggest a, a different way to solve those differences. They could have just had it that he was actually there, and that was the actual history. Right. Uh, especially since Aang wasn't there for the original storytelling. A portion of it, to, you know, instead it was, uh, you know, Sokka and uh, Katara, and they were both with uh, different tribes. I mean, certainly, like, you know, with, uh, you could have done something kind of like with uh, Aang and Boomy, although then you don't want to kind of be there, like, Aang was there for everything, wasn't he, a hundred years ago? But, I don't know, like... But that would make sense, though. I mean... It was established that uh, Wei Jin was an Earthbender. And they're in the Earth. They were in the Earth, and they're in the Earth Kingdom. And Ang has, in the season alone, said he's had he had friends across all of the four nations when he was a hundred years in the past. So it's possible. I mean, the odds are unlikely, but. It's still possible. Better True. than having him lie. True. Yeah, so yeah, no, I think uh, that's a that is a good solution. You could go that way, or you could go with uh, something where just in the heat of things, they realize that, you know, you give uh, both tribes, you know, something that's part of their identity or something where they uh, are able to kind of help out, you know, that uh, the other tribe can't do and, uh, or something along those lines and kind of have them like you know earn that respect i mean don't get me wrong like the everything up until like uh the whole I, you know everything besides the story i i feel worked really well like the climax of uh how to escape the grave pro cave crawler situation worked really well and it was exciting especially since you know you, you have that build up where in the beginning of you know of the episode that one cave crawler did so much damage mm -hmm. and posed so much of a problem and then when you see all these cave crawlers come after them you know that uh, they're in a deep well Saki even said it in this episode that's a lot of cave crawlers and we had so much trouble with just one. No, absolutely. And uh, you know, just that escape and everything. It was it was well done. Uh, but uh, again, just this whole uh, you know lie, especially from the, the hero of the story. It uh, seems so weird. It, it really does. And and don't get me wrong, the story is funny. Like, especially when you compare it to, the, you know, 
their versions of the legends compared to him. But it just, uh, I don't know. It, uh, it rubbed me the wrong way. Not enough to be like, I don't ever want to watch this show again or anything, but it was just kind of like, huh. That's, uh, I think if I was watching this with my kids, I might, you know, after this episode was over, I might talk to them about it and, uh, ask the, you know, kind of, uh, you know, have a, have a, you know, family discussion about it. Yeah. 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 That, that would be a good teachable moment from there. Absolutely. But anyway, that pretty much covers the episode. The good, the bad, the ugly. There wasn't really much ugly in it. Well, the cave crawlers yeah. were pretty ugly. Yeah. Um, I get, like, and, and I know that I harped a, a lot on the, the end of the episode, but, uh, and, like, overall, I, like, I still really enjoyed this episode. Um, and I, I, like, I really enjoyed the, the personal, interpersonal conflicts that happened between the two tribes. And, you know, it, it was silly, but, uh, to the extreme that it went, but uh, I I enjoyed it uh, overall. It's just that one thing that I would have uh, changed. Even little things like the the path split, which uh, forced you know Katara and Sokka to be with each of the tribes and allowed them to hear the different uh, sides of the tale. Like I thought that was like a smart decision and everything. Uh, you know, story device. Um, and even, you know, Aang just kind of being this frustrated, <laughs> frustrated person trying to, you know, get these two groups to, to get along and everything. Like it, uh, it was just a, a solid character episode. Yeah, for sure. But I think that will be, that will be this episode. Yeah. Because, well, just a real little real life, ladies and gentlemen. A couple things coming up in the near future. My wife's having some surgery. Nothing major. Nothing to worry about. Just uh, happens to be coming up. In a few days from now, recording time, this episode will release like three days after. So, by the time you're actually hearing about it, it's already done. And I'm sure she's fine. But, Greg and I have some uh, multiple recordings to do, so we got to shorten them up a little bit. So if you want to, oh, and partially because yeah, he's also going on a little vacation now that things are opening up in about uh, two weeks, right, from today, mm -hmm. which is a week from today for those of you who are watching and listening, going to visit some friends now that there's a little bit less on the travel restrictions over on that side of the border, not bitter because we're actually catching up quite quickly. So, yeah, and also letting my son meet, uh, his other set of grandparents for the first time. Nice. But if you want to follow us throughout the week and find out if anything's gone bad, good, or just mediocre, you can always follow us on Twitter at me, Dr. Alien 201. The show's at Syndicated Pipe. Greg's on there too. At the underscore Badger Piper. We also have an email you can email us at. Reverse flash time at gmail.com. Where else can the people find you, Greg? Uh, Instagram. Uh, you can find me on Instagram at the Badger Piper. And, uh, and you can find me on there and uh, see my occasional posts. Nice. I am also on Instagram, Dr. Allen 201. Nope, 101. I shut down 201. But there is one for the show and any productions that I do. Dr. Alien 201. Both on Instagram. Find them, like them, follow them. You'll find little blurbs. You can hear the episode in advance a little bit. Just to kind of... Yep. Just kind of whet your, whet your appetite. Anyway. We're into Facebook too, right? Yes, we're just getting to that. We do have a Facebook page. Well, actually there are two you can find. You can find my own personal Facebook page, not profile. I'm not doing a profile thing. It's just a regular, you know, like, influencer type page. Because I'm not that. I'm just being ironic. And there's one Dr. Alien 201 Productions where all these videos are being put up as alongside of at YouTube, just in case YouTube decides to try to make money of us and not pay us. 
Maybe I shouldn't have said that for YouTube. Oh well, too late. Uh, oh well. But, yeah, with all that being said, good smokes, great entertainment, and we will see you next week. Check with you later.